Welcome back to the Leighton Orient Clubcast. I'm media manager Luke Lambourne and this week we'll be catching up with director of football Martin Ling. We'll chat to Martin to see how everyone's getting on from the playing side of things and we'll also bring up some key talking points from COVID-19 and football including the EFL season, when it may resume and player contracts. So hi Martin, thanks for joining us. First of all, um, how have you been keeping? Yeah, I've been keeping okay. Uh, strange times, uh, but trying to keep myself busy. Uh, I'm not a particular uh, expert in and around the house, if I'm totally honest. Uh, but there's there's uh, there's there's things that uh, myself and and Sam has joined me in doing uh, in the garden and out the front, and also being very busy with uh, Zoom calls. Uh, conference calls and all sorts of calls from uh, from America uh, so it's it's been it's been strange but I, you know my day is sort of blocked off into very work parts of it and then some stuff that you have to activate activate my mind by doing something in and around the house yeah absolutely um I guess a lot of those calls you'd have been in dialogue um at some stage or another with with Ross and, and part of the playing staff um, how are they all progressing and, and kind of how are they doing and, um, with everything in these times? Yeah, I mean, Ross and, you know, if I go for Ross and, and the staff first, you know, it, it's it's very difficult for them. You know, there's not, uh, again, it's not anything they can do. Uh, you know, the players are, uh, will keep themselves fit. Uh, and, and, and you know whether they're given the instruction now to do it, which they which they are, they ain't at the moment. But they, you know, just looking at Zab, Sam, he ain't gonna sit around and do nothing. So he likes to go and do his exercise outside. Uh, and it's yeah, and Ross is. I think he's just trying to keep people in 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 the focus of you know there is still a season that we understand it to be played, and uh, when that does happen are we ready for when that does happen and I feel that we will be and that will probably come on to that a bit later but in terms of that that kind of focus for the players and for the staff it's it's quite unique in the sense that everything's been stopped and and we'll be picking up from from where we go before I guess with a a regular season or a regular season break you kind of have that time um in pre-season to kind of bring new people into the club and get everyone up to date with everything or go on a pre-season training tour so everyone feels a bit more ready for the task at hand. So in terms of what will happen coming back into this kind of second part of the season, if you like, how will that be um, arranged? Yeah, it's just it's just looking at, you know, we've come to the conclusion that, 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 that we feel that, that everybody wants the season to finish. So that tells me that that's what will happen. Finishes in, uh, how, sorry, is that as in finished by playing out the remaining games? Yeah, by playing a bit out of the remaining games for the season, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, you've got to get into your, into your mindset of the, the, there's going to be a period where we can go back to train. Once we go back to train, what's that period between first day we can go back training to, to, the, to the first game of the season? Or first game of the second part of the season, and how how that should look in terms of you know training programs and and, and you know we we know we're going to get a pre season or a mini pre season a end of the season a gap rest period another mini pre season and then season start so that's mm. that's the five components which is an unusual five components by every straight stretch of the imagination. So it's just about being, I think the, the, the word that we all used was to be flexible. Uh, whatever's put in front of us, we'll have to handle. I don't think there's, any, again, there's ever going to be a perfect scenario where if the players are going to be off for you know, six weeks, come up two months by the time they start playing again, should they have more than three weeks to get ready? Yes. Are they going to get more than three weeks to get ready? Probably not. Mm. Uh, so everybody's in the same boat and I think we've just got to be adaptable uh, got to realise that the players ain't machines you know there may be a case of that you've got to use uh, a bit more of a squad element to the to the, to the end of the season uh, because the games are going to come at you thick and fast uh, but the main thing at the moment is just to, to make sure everyone knows that the season isn't finished even though it's strange to say that after being sat at home for the period we have mm. 
Absolutely. And so you said, obviously, about everyone there being in the same boat. Do you think that will be the case? Or do you think some clubs might come back a little bit more, they're perhaps prepared than others? Or is there some kind of advantage that some clubs can find in this time, do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know if they're... You know, there's some rumour... Uh, there's rumours wherever I turn, really, but there's rumours coming out that, 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 that they are, we may be uh, phased back into training. So you might come back in smaller groups. Uh, now, how quick you can start to do that is 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 you know people you're going to be you're going to be you are going to be guided and and, and we all got to know what the main issue here is is to keep people alive you know mm. it's obvious thing to say keep keep people alive my, my daughter works for the nhs so keep the nhs uh being able to function because of all this and whatever comes in terms of a football season and everything else it has to come secondary but it, it because it's ha- our job and our, and our place of work mm. we want to make sure if we go into a football season we go in there with putting our best foot forward uh but you i think you're gonna have to you really really gonna have to be totally adaptable as any type of coaches any type of uh staff members and and, and the players are gonna have to be adaptable as well going towards the end of the season because you know you could be playing the first two months in 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 May June July where it's roasting hot when we're normally laying on the beach so the mentality of changing that round again is is a difficult thing but as I say we're all in the same I don't think I can't see how you can get an end advantage there may be some people that can maybe give their players different types of work and 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 monitor it closely but for us we just have a belief that the players are going to keep themselves fit and we'll be able to uh, get a period with them to go into that first game. I think there's any kind of added pressure on certain teams, for example, the ones that are maybe top of the table and, and playing for promotion versus perhaps the likes of ourselves where, you know, relegation isn't as much of a, as a worry as it perhaps it once was in the season and, and things look to be a little bit more, a um, bit more safe. Is there perhaps a bigger pressure on other teams to, to make this time count? Yeah, because I think that, you know, we, we, we're sitting here very relaxed, you know, it, it, it's, very, very, very unlikely we're going to go down, and it's very, very unlikely we're going to make the top seven. Now, both of them mathematically are not a given, but you know they're as dear as damn not going to happen. Mm. And you know, I was talking again, you know, talking with Sam. Uh, he he was saying, just imagine if it was last year, Dad. You know that we're sitting there thinking, well, there's there's options of what this season this season might be. You know, void this season may be done by you know percentages of points you've got already. There's two two things I've heard. Or this season will be played out. If you're sitting there and waiting for them games, I think it would be you know absolute. If if, if we think we're in a bad position now, in terms of sitting and waiting for things to happen, can you imagine being in that position of them teams that can go up and can go down? I would like to think about. Uh, all the scenarios they're going through, but uh, yeah, we are in a we are in a privileged position in that respect. I mean, if they stop the season tomorrow uh, and went and go straight into playing August of the next season, being the next season and not finishing it, it wouldn't affect us. But mm. I don't think that's fair. You know, even though it don't affect us, I don't think that's the fairest way to do it. I think the fairest way to do it, if it's humanly possible, is to play the games. I think the second fairest way to do it is is uh, points average. You know, the points that you've got over the games that you've played. You know, if if there has to be a decision made, I would rather that be the second decision for people uh, because I can't see people that played thirty six games, which is you know three quarters of the season, and 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 it, and it not counting for anything. So. Mm. The best way is for it to play, but we are in a privileged position, and and we can we can even though we. That previous position we've, we've talked about that we still want to finish this season well to go to take into next season whenever that may be. Mm. Another topic that's been of some debate in the news is, is kind of player contracts and how that will kind of work for obviously like maybe in contract till till June for example, but we could see the season restarting in July, August, or whenever that's deemed safe to do so. So is that a kind of area you can give a bit of clarity on for for people listening? Yes, yeah, so it's, 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 it's you know the. I think that people, uh, I'll give them the advice to put the 31st of July as the cut-off day because if you've got a contract and you're a football league player, you would be paid July's money if you never found another club. 
Mm. So the actual outlay, financial outlay to, to a club, it, it, it is there to the thirty first of July. If if you if if you if you got players out of contract in June, uh, I would, you know, I would guess that uh, that the powers to be would like to get it finished by the end of July, if humanly possible, because of that reason. Because once you go outside that period, it becomes very difficult because all of a sudden someone that's contract runs out, and let's say the thirty of June, but they get the they get the seventh payment up to the 31st of July, so it allows you to pay them till then. Once you go into August, you know, it, it's it's now going into unknown territory for everybody. Mm. And uh, we're, again, we're lucky in this respect is that I think we've got, uh, we've only got eight players that are out of contract, uh, eight of our, uh, our players that are out of contract for next season. You know, there's a lot of clubs where it would be the other way round, where you'd have 20 out of contract and eight in contract. Now, if we just played with our contracted players and didn't play without, and we played without our players that haven't got a contract, then we could put a team out and put a squad out because we've got mm. 20. But most clubs ain't going to be able to do that. Uh, and people that, uh, people that want, I mean, there's, there's rumour of saying FIFA are going to say we can extend. The contract and and, and and the date. I think it's a lot harder than people think. I really do. I think that's going to be a net. I think that's the biggest minefield in all of it. Players that are out of contract coming on the 30th of June to say if it goes to the 31st of July, it's something that would normally be uh, there as an option. So not so bad. But anything after the 31st of July, I think makes it really, really complicated to see what you do with your contracted players. Because if you've got a nuclear players out of contract, uh, you're not going to be able to put a team out. And then if you can put a team out, it comes down to the argument, if you put a team out and put some of the youth team in it, are you then going to be playing a weakened side against other teams that, that have got the opportunity to win the league? So is it a fair playing field? So I do believe that's the biggest, or certainly one of the biggest hurdles that the, 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 the football league have got to get across. I don't think it's as easy as just to say, let's extend the contract. So I think, uh, law and there'd be certain people that would look at law that maybe not allow that to happen as, as easy as it sounds mm. and then I guess part of the complication would come as well with the transfer window because if clubs are looking to strengthen their teams during that time and obviously that would be a thing that most clubs would be looking to do then and how'd that pan out and I guess it just makes it even more complicated doesn't it yeah I mean it is, because if you start to say that the transfer window remains the same and you sign players surely you can't use them in this season you know, mm. your players that, that, but you know, they, they will be contracted to you possibly during the, you know, contracted on date wise in a season where they can't, where they, where they shouldn't be able to play. I don't think you should be able to, you know, improve your, con improve your players that you're going to take into next year and play them in this year's competition. But mm. you, know, you can imagine sitting around the table, Luke, can't you, with all this, you know, I'm, I'm being asked this uh, many times and, and I don't. You know, 38 years of, of being involved, I've never been in this situation because I don't know the answers. Normally, I can sort of go back into my memory bank and find the answer from somewhere. Mm. Well, if I don't know the answer, I speak to someone that I feel would know the answer. But whenever I speak to other people, they're as confused as I am because I, there's no, there's no, there's no perfect remedy. There ain't no mm. perfect remedy. I believe that getting the season finished by the 31st of July is the best remedy, and that's what they would do or would love to do but I I can't see I don't like to put, put the damper on the supporters side of things but I don't see many supporters being in games for the rest of this season mm. if there is games going on I do believe they would certainly would start behind closed doors and maybe build up to, to getting some sort of crowd in uh, but I think with the with the with the current plight of, with the Covid I'm not so sure you're going to get many fans in between now and the end of the season, whatever that may be. Yeah, it's certainly a difficult one to, to navigate. Um, I guess one question is, is probably already answered in a way, but as a player, manager, now director of football, you've probably seen a lot of things in football, but can there be anything that's really compared to this current situation? No, I don't think. I mean, if someone, you know, but we, we, we all understand that we've had, you know, we've had difficult season in terms of with Justin and 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 with 
you know, with the point of Carl Fletcher. But, you know, the one thing is that, you know, there's the Justin thing is, is someone losing their life. And, and, and that's where, and someone personal to us all is losing life. But we've got, also got to put this bracket in the same breath is that, all right, we don't know people personally, but there has been people within our staff have lost personal people already. Mm. And it is people dying. And, and no, you know, if someone said to me, well, I remember when it was first muted about, uh, about this COVID and, 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 and I think, oh, we might be, you know, my feeling was, because of how things are, we might be, you know, we might be put at home for a couple of days, you know, a week, you know, and, and, and then before you know it, we'll be back out there playing football. And, 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 and what's happened and what you see developing in front of you is, is, is frightening, actually. Mm. You know, I watch, I watch, I try not to watch the news too much as I think you can get embroiled in, in the downside of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I like to watch it every day to see what's going on. I get the stories, you know, my daughter is a physiotherapist at Arlo Hospital and they, people probably think that, oh, physio, but she's, she's in, you know, the ECU unit every day where she's mm. working on people's breathing, where people, you know, she's telling me some stories of people that have uh, lost their life and they're not all old people. You know, there's some young, there's some youngsters as well. And, and, and uh, to see it that close and see her come home, like facing up to it every day, just it, 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 it's frightening what's going on in in the world, and I think the backlash of it and and and, and, and is going to be you know it's going to be hard for you know as a as a as the economy to get back running. So you know I think football comes down the pecking order, but I also think kick up football's quite high on the pecking order, and I think the reason I say that is I think that there's so many people in the country that would. would that are interested in football to watch football to, to I think it would be a light relief for people. So we've been putting on some entertainment in, in some dark times. Uh, so, but could I ever foresee what's happened, happened, you know, with six and a half weeks by the end of it, when we're going to be allowed out, if we were allowed, you know, out at that stage, when I say allowed out, like, you know, a normal uh, way of living. Uh, but no, it's, and as I said to you, it's difficult. I mean, I said this about Justin passing away. I've never had to deal. With, I've had to deal with death, you know, in my family and that type. But to deal with something that close to you, mm. and and know where to go with the answers. Some, sorry, somewhere inside, them answers come from within me. I don't quite know where sometimes, but I did. And with this, again, it's I can only give my, you know, my best. Uh, knowledge, best guess of, of what's going to go on, and, and just try to keep everyone. I try to be do two things. One is to try and keep people focused, but also try to give someone a bit of a, a smile and a laughter as well. Because, you know, if you if you want to get down, and I've been there, you know, with my illness, I won't allow that to happen. But I have to do certain stuff like exercise, find things to do. Mm -hmm. It's important for people to keep a positive and 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 and, uh, and uh, a happy outlook on life what it's going to be because it's going to go back to normal eventually life will go on but it, it it will take time and and, and understanding of something that we don't really understand uh sitting here at this moment in time yeah and just i guess to develop on that one a bit obviously you have been a massive advocate for mental health in in your career um and obviously at a time right now when people find themselves indoors a lot and you know isolated is there any advice you can give to those people who, who are struggling and, and, and maybe finding you know a really difficult time at the moment it's weird isn't it, it, it there's, there's two things that i believe are, uh, uh, are paramount to my well-being uh, one is exercise uh which it is not what it used to be like as a professional sportsman but to go out uh, for our hour, hour and a half walk, you know, uh, uh, a quick walk and get you, I think you, you've got to get out of the house because we're allowed to at the moment. My sister lives in Tenerife and they're not allowed to. And she's just saying, you know, the fact that just to get out, get out there. And and the other thing is, is these type of meetings that me and you are sitting having here, uh, you know, we, we, we do it as a, as a group of staff uh, and we do it, zoom or we do it face you know so you can see someone you can see whether they're you know they're good and and, and your recognition and knowing people so talk to people talk and if you can talk via 
FaceTime, Zoom, or any of them other unit uh, units you can use, then, then then do it. So for me, it's, it's people being open, speaking, and exercises is, is, is something for me that uh, I have to do on a daily basis. Mm. And um, one for us to kind of maybe finish up on is you'd have mentioned earlier about how you know now we're indoors all the time, we're reflecting a bit and maybe looking at the things we've kind of taken for granted a bit in our day-to-day life. So in terms of Leighton Orient and, and football, what is it? What are those things that you've probably taken for granted and I'm really looking forward to to um, experiencing again? Yeah, it's just the you know when I look down and 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 when I look down. It, it, 38 years of being in it, you know, that for me is, and I've, there's a few times I've flitted back to being a 14, 15 year old, that, you know, a 14 year old that was going down to Exeter uh, as a schoolboy mm. from London, who got a chance and then took his chance and, 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 and then, you know, it, it just sometimes, uh, sometimes in life that things that happen you, that you, that you look back at and you think, well, that was, that was, that was, that you, that was lucky or coincidence or, you know, them, them type of things where you think and, and you're still doing what you love to this day. And, and, and it's just about, I don't, I said, I didn't realise how much sport I watched on telly until mm. there's no sport on telly to watch. You know what I mean? Because then I'm finding stuff that, I, that, I mean, I'm not really, but I've found a few little bits that, that I've enjoyed watching. And I didn't realise how much I always thought that sport was a massive part of my life because I've worked in it all the time, but it, 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 it is so much bigger than I thought it was. You know, mm. it's only when it's gone that you realise that how big it actually is and, and, and how important it is to us. Uh, and just the, again, for me, it's the interaction. Being in, being in football, it gives you, allows you to be in an in a environment that's, that's got a lot of fun around it a lot of the times because you've got groups of players, you've got groups of staff, you've got a group of staff back at the offices and you go around and, and I'm, you know, I have my serious moments, as you know, sitting in my office, but I also have my mad moments where I come out for 10 to 15 minutes and just have a laugh with everybody because it's about that interaction with people and this allows me to interact with people and, uh, you know, I, I, I miss it severely. A massive thank you to Martin Ling who joined us on the Clubcast this week. Remember to subscribe to us on YouTube and you can keep up to date with everything that's coming out from Leighton Orient.